gender equality certainly come a long way over the centuries, but even back in the 1700s, there were some powerful women. Yes, and now Chawton House in Hampshire is celebrating some of those who stood their ground and played men at their own games. They're the subject of an exhibition called Man Up, and together with Alexis, we've been taking a look. This is a man's world! Throughout history, women have faced restrictions based on their gender and rebelled by reversing the roles. Take Mary Ann Talbot, the mistress of a sea captain. She wasn't allowed to accompany her lover on board, so she disguised herself as a man and joined the ship, pretending to be his footman. Then there's Hannah Snell, who married a Dutch sailor. When he ran away, she dressed in military clothing and went after him. She served as a Marine and fought the French in India. Later, when she confessed to her crewmates, several of them proposed to her. They're featured in an exhibition, Man Up, at Chawton House in Hampshire and on the website. There was this tiny chapbook, Miss Betsy Warwick, the female rambler, and she gets incarcerated in a nunnery but escapes in men's clothing. And it was a really popular trope in the 18th and early 19th century of women dressing up and masquerading and I was like I wonder if there are many other stories in our collection about that and it turns out there are a lot. Some women adopted men's clothing purely for practical reasons and Bonnie and Mary Reed were real-life pirates of the Caribbean and would have found it difficult to swing from the rigging in their petticoats. On the other hand Letitia Ann Sage was quite happy with her attire and determined to join the men reaching great heights by becoming the first British woman to fly. She goes up into the balloon ascent and in all the kerfuffle, uh, some lacing in the basket gets untied. She kneels down, he steadies her with his hand and um, imaginations run wild. He's as a result lauded a hero and she's lampooned in the press for it. Lampooned she may have been, but Letitia, an actress by trade, simply revelled in the attention and wrote her memoirs. Chawton House itself was home to a powerful woman. Elizabeth Knight inherited the estate in 1702. She married twice and insisted that both her husbands took her surname and signed a prenuptial agreement. What's interesting about the document is all the crossings out. So she would have had her lawyers draw it up. She's the one correcting it and getting her way around it. So all of the money that is produced from the properties goes directly to her. This is a man's world! Definitely worth seeing that. All right. yeah. Lots of information. A lot of things that I didn't know. Certainly. Fascinating. And some powerful women. Lovely. Absolutely. 